So I'm Dr. Bill Hopkins. I'm a professor at Virginia Tech in the Department of Fish and Wildlife Conservation. And this is one of the animals that I study. It's the Eastern Hellbender. It's one of the largest salamanders in the world. It's the largest salamander in North America. These guys are really, really important ecologically and are very sensitive to changes in water quality. And so we study these animals to try to understand the overall health of aquatic ecosystems. And so we find these guys in cold mountain streams that are well oxygenated and have very low levels of environmental pollutants. Uh, this is the eastern hellbender. The Ozark hellbender, which is another subspecies, uh, that subspecies is federally endangered. The eastern hellbender, because of changes to water quality, uh, is probably going to become endangered pretty soon. And so we're trying to understand this animal's physiology, its behavior, its ecology, in order to try to conserve it and the habitats that it lives in. So one of the things that I think is really, really cool about hellbenders is their reproductive biology. Uh, unlike a lot of animals where the females tend to take care of a lot of the babies, uh, hellbenders uh, have very, very different reproductive system. Uh, the males actually, uh, early in the breeding season, will take over these large nest rocks, these big slab flat rocks, and they'll guard those rocks. They'll build the nest under that rock, and then the females, they attract females in, and the females will then come in, deposit their eggs, and the males will actually guard the eggs until they hatch. And there's some evidence, actually, that the males may even hang out with the babies for quite some time thereafter. And so a very, very different system than what we're oftentimes accustomed to seeing in a lot of different wildlife species. During the first year of a hellbender's life, after they hatch out of the egg, they actually have external gills. So the gills would actually protrude here. The hellbender itself would be very, very small, just a couple centimeters, tops long, and has external gills. And then after the first year of life, they resorb those gills and breathe predominantly across the skin. If you look here carefully, when I, when I put this hellbender back in the water, you can see that there's these flaps of skin along the sides here. Those flaps of skin serve to increase surface area. You can see them waving in the water there. They increase surface area, and so this hellbender can actually meet most of its oxygen demands entirely across the skin. So absorbing that from this cold, well-oxygenated mountain stream. One of the things we're trying to do is inform the public uh, that this animal, which is oftentimes misunderstood, uh, is something to really be proud of. It's something to cherish as one of our natural resources.